I say, God is not interested in results because God is the one that determines the results. Alright? If you lay hand on the sick and the sick get healed, who healed the sick? You and I know it's God who healed the sick, correct or not? But how many of you, when you all lay hands and pray, and if the person doesn't get healed, immediately you get disappointed with yourself? It has nothing to do with you. It has to, everything to do with God. God will heal the person at his time because God is not a man that he will lie, nor a son of man that he will repent. Have he not said and will he not do? He will do it at his own timing. But when we all get disappointed, after that we don't lay hands and pray. We don't pray. We come to Sunday to church, we pray. Oh, the person gets slain. The person doesn't get slain, we feel disappointed. There's nothing wrong with me. It has nothing to do with you because the result is all done by God. Do you understand what I'm saying? What the Bible doesn't never say, go ye and make everybody Christian. He said, go ye and preach the good news. Correct? Your role, my role is to preach. God's role is to save the person. Uh, it's the Holy Spirit jobs too. Because they did not choose God, God chose them. So, when you are called to do that, you just preach the word. Just so the, the man, the Bible says, the scatters the seed. Some fell on good ground, some fell on rocky ground. Uh, some, because of the scorching heat, they never germinate. But your role as a sower is to sow the seeds. So you are supposed to sow seeds of kindness, seeds of love, share the gospel. That's the, the, your work. Romans chapter 10 says, how will they get saved if nobody speaks to them? And how, how will anybody be able to go if nobody send? So the church has to send the people out there. So it is your role and my role to go out and so, and God's role to do the uh, handpicking the people and so on. So if you are today in church day and you are handpicked by God, you are chosen people, peculiar people, specially chosen by God uh, for a reason. Right? So remember that this is the, the, the thing. Your role and my role is to go and preach the, the good news. So don't, don't let anything deter you. Every time thinking that uh, things must happen immediately before you. The Bible says, one man sow, another man water. But God who's the one that gave the increase. Correct? So it doesn't mean, you say, the man who sow, the man who water, the man who sow the increase. It was one man who sowed, one man who watered, and God gave the increase. So remember, if you continue to be faithful and do your role and sow the, the kingdom of God, God himself will be pleased. That's why he said, good and faithful servant. When we get our, our perspective right in, uh, in the kingdom of God, then it is not difficult to, to serve in the kingdom of God. You see, if you, if you are result-oriented people, mostly, most times you don't end up faithful. How many of you have church members who come to you and say, Pastor, please pray for me, i got financial problem. After you pray for them, then the business flourish, they don't come to church, they got no time anymore. Because they are result-oriented. But if you get people who are faithfulness-oriented, Bible says, surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. The Bible tells us, no good thing will I withhold from those that walk is right. So God wants all the good things for you. So if God is not interested in result, what is He interested? He's basically interested whether you are obedient or not. Uh, he's, well, he's not say, because when you are obedient, results will, will chase after you. And so it's important that you and I be, are obedient and not... Because most times, people don't perform because they I'm not gifted. I cannot. I'm not like Dr. Kwan who can speak so well, you know. God's not looking for you or your talent. Because talent are given by God. Gifts are given by God. You know, God looking for availability. Yes, Lord. Look, here am I. Uh, uh, use me, Lord. And God begin to use you uh, and extend His kingdom beyond your, your own ability to, 
to, to understand because then you and I will be able to give that glory to God. I could not do it, but God used me. I never thought I, I, it could happen a church of this size, but God made it available. So when you understand the first principle is faithfulness and obedience. In your life and my life, it is not so much on on the results or how much money you give, it is how faithful you are with the kingdom of God. So it is important for you and I to work on faithfulness, uh, not so much on the results part of it. Don't worry if you are arranging the chair, just do your arrangement of the chair. Okay, second principle is God is not a fair God. Again, Challenging uh, uh, theologically. I tell people God is not a fair God. Uh, God is not fair, but God is just. Because He gave one person one talent, one two talent, one four talent. If God is fair, everybody gets four talent, correct? Then God is a communist God. God is not uh, fair. Uh, but he is just. To the one he gave one talent, he asked back for one. And the one he gave two, he asked back for two. And the one he gave four, he asked back for four. Scripture for this, much is given, much is expected. When God bless somebody more, God expects you to do more. Uh, that's the kingdom principle. In the end, God measure you by the, by the amount he invests in you. For you, if he had given you one talent, he expects one talent back from you. So remember this, that in the kingdom of God, don't wake up every morning and say, God, why this person drive a big car, I got a small car. Because the whole life you are so angry, you, are, you come up with this, if you are fair, how come he got big car, I got small car? How come he got big house, I got small house? You know, and, and at the end of the day, we, we live our life, uh, not with gratefulness, but we live our life Bitter because we compare with other people. But if you live your life realizing whatever position you are being put in, whatever God has blessed you, He has a purpose for that moment. And the Bible says promotion comes from the Lord. As you become faithful in the things of God, God will promote you. If all of you look at your own life, your, to your today is better than yesterday. But your tomorrow will be better than today. That's the promise of God, you know, because He brings you from glory to glory. Right? But in this journey, He need for you and I to learn. Learn to depend on Him, learn to get back uh, the, uh, on this journey. He tells you the end. Uh, he, does, he, he doesn't tell you the journey. The journey, you have to hold His hand uh, as you walk through and you encounter one problem, you encounter one challenge. At the end of the day, you learn from your challenge. If you don't learn, you, you get back to the first stage again. You learn until you learn. Learn and say, you know, and then, then like, like King David said, create in me a clean heart. You realize that after he had done something wrong, he needed to turn back to God. If he don't turn back to God, he, he, the repercussion, you all know that the son died and so on. Uh, but at the end of the day, he learned lessons. And then when he repented, uh, that's why he's got, uh, God calls him a man after his own heart Because a man who knew that he is a human being He has weaknesses But he needed a God who will help him to journey with him And so you understand that Don't wake up every morning And wake up, the Bible tells us Enter his gates with thanksgiving Praise unto God And you, you praise your God into a situation Until you enter into the Holy of Holies, and you begin to receive from the Lord uh, the grace and the mercy. He said, when the light comes, darkness overcome it not. All your problems will not be overcome when the light is upon your life. So important, there are scriptures here you can take back. After I, I go off, you can take the notes. But there are many scripture references to this that you can go and read up yourself and so on. That's the second principle. The third principle is 
the one that take care of the baggage and the one that goes to war receive the same reward. In the church environment like this, I want to tell you, it is not the pastor that stand on the pulpit that get all the reward. The pastor was given four talents. Billy Graham was given four talents. But the one that arranged the chair, the one that take care of the overhead projector, the one that serve uh, a drink, or the one that ushered the people into the, into the church, received the same reward. Because King David says, the one that took care of the baggage and the one that goes to war received the same reward. The kingdom of God doesn't operate in the sense that everybody fighting in the church quarreling want to be a leader of the church. That's not what God is looking at. He's looking at how some are eyes, some are ears, some are feet, or how they work together, the Bible says. Huh? And then the, it becomes a, a sharp instrument that can pierce through the darkness. So the church must work in, in, in tandem where different people are given different giftings and we work with our giftings that God has given us. Some are in the gift of help, yeah, because you have burden for people that other people don't have the same burden, but God raised you to lead the people. So it is important in the church that every part comes. Jesus says, when I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. You know, uh, when I was in prison, you visited me. Jesus says, we are done, when they are done to, all this they are done unto me. So in the kingdom of God, it is the, everyone pl plays a role. You'll be surprised that when, uh, you're thinking that the pastor will get all the results, but some of the ones that have been faithfully arranging the chair, cleaning the toilets, are the people who will receive also the same reward in the kingdom of God. You know, because the, the Bible tells us that God uh, has... King, everybody during King David time, everybody wanted to go to war. Everybody wanted to be the hero, the champion, I'm the general, the thing. but King David is the one that takes care of the baggage, and the one that goes to war receive the same reward. So in the kingdom of God, there's none of you here that can say that you have no talent. Right? Because the Bible says one talent, two talent, and four talent. It never says it was the one that was given zero talent. So everyone is given a talent. You have to recognize your talent and what is your talent. Some of you cook very nice curry chicken. You can cook the curry chicken and bring to church and bless somebody. You know, in uh, ministry of help, I want to share with you all, uh, an example. When I was in my twenties, I used to fetch uh, a lady that go to hospital. Uh, she was on a wheelchair, and uh, weekends I would bring her for checkup and so on. Now, one day my car got stolen, and uh, and then she met me. And then I said, "Praise the Lord, God is going to give me a new car." She said, crazy man, uh, fanatic. She told us, she was not a Christian, fanatic, talk like that, you know. I want to tell you that 20 years later when I was speaking in a meeting like this, and uh, I was talking about Jesus, after the meeting, the lady walked up and said, brother, do you remember me? I said, you look very familiar. She said, 20 years ago, I said you were a fanatic, today I'm a Christian. So I want to tell you that the kingdom of God is like that. When you sow the seed, you don't worry about the timing. God himself will save the people. You know? But your role and my role is to sow in the kingdom of God. Uh, so you, none of you here can ever tell, stand before God and say, I got no talent. There is some talent you have here that you can contribute to the church, to the community, to help the people around you. So it is very important you are understand these principles because these principles get twisted in the church environment. At the end of the day, you find so the devil so discord in the church. People tear one another. You know, we are supposed to be light of the world. Even the smallest candle will glow in the dark. Uh, a candle will not lose its light while lighting other candles. But today, too many people in the church light a candle in the church. They blow one another candle. <laughs> Got nothing to do, just blow. Look for a problem, look for this person. Oh, you see this person, he say he love me, but he doesn't care. Uh, pastor forget to say, wish me good morning. Uh, so they are only looking for problems. 
uh, and they're blowing one another candle. But they are not uh, understanding. If you are the light of the world, you've got no time for all this nonsense. There's a world, a dying world out there. There's a hurting world out there that need, need you and me. We need to go out there and make the difference out there. Amen? The fourth principle. The natural law precedes the spiritual law. The natural law precedes the sp spiritual law means this. I want to tell you that I wrote a book called Chess Chronicle. Life is like a game of chess. Uh, some of us are king and some of us are pawn. All right? Some of us are richer, some of us are poorer, some of us are more higher in status than other people. Uh, like di the different pieces in the game of chess. But when the game is over, every piece goes back into the box. You and I no need to be papai or no need to be boastful. One day you will die, I promise you that. And I will die also. And then we will stand before God and then to give account for how we live our life. Whether we use it uh, to, for the kingdom uh, or whether we use it for ourselves. And so it's important that you and I realize this, that in life there is a manufacturing date there is an expiry date. Canned food got manufacturing date, got expiry date. The plants got manufacturing date, expiry date. Animals got manufacturing date and expiry date. Every one of us will die one day. Don't live as if you will not die. This is the natural process. The natural process means everybody will die. Huh? We have a three score and ten years, seventy years of life. We will have to stand before God. Huh? Some of us live as if we will never die. Quarrel, cheat, fight one another for additional one dollar. Uh, forget about all this, this integrity and character, but we don't realize that we will one day die and stand before God. And that's a fearful thing, you know. So it's very important for us to realize that natural things will happen. Whether you are Christian or not Christian, there are natural processes that operate in the world that God has allowed. The, the, even the Buddhist, the Hindu, the Muslim, everybody know whatever you sow, you will reap. Correct? Before you were Christian, you, this principle was operating. You do good, good will come back to you. You do bad, bad will come back to you. Bible also have this principle. You sow good seed, bad good fruits. Bad seed will bear bad fruits. So the principle of sowing and reaping is there. Many of us don't want to sow, but want to reap. In, in the church environment, we also, when we, God asks you to uh, serve, you say, oh, uh, yeah, I, I got this. I brought me a wife. I, 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 I married me a wife. I bought me a cow. I bought me a few. I got no time. Huh? But at the end of the day, we stand and say, Lord, where is my blessing, Lord? Where is my blessing? We don't want to sow, but we want to reap. And so it's important that the principle of sowing and reaping operates. So, Natural laws operate. The early bird catches the worm. If you wake up early in the morning, the tendency you get blessed is more. You work harder, you get blessing more. Uh, how, uh, how do many of you, I, I was uh, invited to speak into an African church, you know. African people believe in anointing service. Uh, if, a pastor, if a businessman do very well, he pray for you, you will do very well, you know. So he won the, the laying hands on anointing. I say, how many of you wake up in the morning and go to work? I say, some of you roll from left bed to the right bed and right bed to the left bed and woke up and you pray, God, oh, please bless me. I say, God is not going to bless you. Because God blessed the labor of your hands. The Bible says, when God asked Moses, what is in your hand? Huh? So it is important that you and I know there's a principle that you have to work. Christians are not raised to be lazy people. Because the Bible says, learn from the ends. Huh? Arise, O Israel. Huh? Put off your slumber. Put off your laziness. So we are called to be even more harder than the non-Christians. Because if they ask you to walk one mile, you walk two miles. The Bible says. Correct. So the natural law operates. Huh? Don't ever think that you are hyper-spiritual. At the end of the day, you don't need to do the proper thing. You work. Because... The sowing, one man sow, 
and another man walked, uh, his two men were working. The increase is supernatural, but two men were working. It never said two men pray and uh, God gave the increase. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not telling you all you should not pray. You must pray because uh, it is not the lofty sail, but the unseen that moves the ship. It is not uh, how big your sail is, how smart, how much degree you have, but God chooses to blow into your life yourself. Uh, you get favor in the eyes of God and in the eyes of men. It is important for you to do But it is for also to remember it is not just uh, uh, totally forgetting about uh, your responsibility to work hard. The Bible tells us is, uh, that if a, if a Christian man who doesn't provide for the family, he's worse than a non-believer. So, you, you, you have a responsibility that you have to discharge. Uh, it is not God doesn't violate his own principle. He doesn't violate the total order that he has for life. So it's important for you all and I to know that there is this principle. Uh, Christians are not called to be lazy. You have to wake up, work even more harder. You should be kneeling down and praying and so on. This thing happens uh, sometimes unconsciously, but it happens in our life because we swing, again I say, we swing to a, uh, uh, different uh, priorities and we take scriptures and then at the end of the day, we lose the whole context of what God wants in our life. God's, not, God's raising a Christian who will shine for him. You know? So it's important for you and I to know these are principles uh, I have discovered as a Christian. This is the some of these principles that, uh, that the spiritual laws that operate. Because some of us can just blindly uh, miss out exactly what God wants in our life. So when we understand that priorities in our life, then we, we, we work on obedience before God. We work on teamwork. I help you, you help me by brother, the one that takes care of the baggage and the one that goes to war receives the same reward. I work on teamwork, I work on obedience before God, I work to realize I must wake up with thanksgiving in my heart. I woke up that I must work hard like every other people. I must provide. Huh? When God asked Noah that it's only the flood, he had to build the ark also. You know, so there is a, a role that you and I must play as Christians. Huh? Because if I am a worship leader, I stand here and I preach on worship, I will tell you, I will make you feel so guilty that you never worship uh, uh, in your life. Uh, if I am a mission person, director, I will tell you that if you don't go, go for mission, you are the worst person. You know. But gospel is totality. The whole gospel is totality. So the total part of it is you and I must be involved in the various part, but we must operate the balance in it in our, in our life, even in our own families and so on. You all get me so far? Okay, the next uh, four points is the four spiritual flaws. What are the spiritual flaws? Sorry. Once you become a Christian, you will have no problems. And those who are laughing realize that this is not true, okay? Because uh, all of us have challenges in our life. Uh, don't ever let the devil lie to you. The moment you think that I become a Christian, got no problem, uh, I want to tell you that you get disappointed very easily and you fall away. I want to tell you, but if you are Christian, uh, don't let the devil lie to you that God forsake you because you are uh, uh, having problems in your life. I want to tell you, even if you are not Christian, you will still have the same problem. How many of you think that the pandemic only happened to Christians? It happened to everybody. Uh, the only difference as a Christian is that Psalm 23 says, Though I walk 
through the valley. He never said, though I walk into the valley. You are not called to walk into your problem. You are walk, called to walk through your problem. So God wants to help you to go through it, through your problem. When, when Jesus asked his disciple to go on the, sh on, on the boat to the other side of the shore, then you all know the story that the storms came and then Jesus said, Oh, you of little faith, and so on. Do you think that Jesus knew that there will be a storm coming? He knew there will be a storm. But he wanted the, the, the disciple to learn, uh, to grow in faith, to trust, learn to trust him. That's why when God brought the Israelites out from Egypt, and he asked Joshua to take them into the promised land, he, are you not surprised that the first Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 he says be strong and of good courage do not be dismayed or discouraged huh? for I will never leave you nor forsake you right God never tell him don't worry I fight all the battle for you don't worry when God is for you who is against you he said I will never leave you nor forsake you God sometimes have to bring us to path in life for us to learn lessons. Many of us appreciate uh, after we've gone through the problems, through the challenges, uh, then we realize that God was involved. You know, many of us, when you look through our life and the school days, when the, ch the teacher take the kid and whack us, we say, bloody fool, one day I hit you, one day I give it back to you. But after we come out in life, we say, thank God my teacher whacked me. Huh? Thank God my father disciplined me because we realize that in, in all that we learn many things in our life. And so sometimes in, the, in our journey, in, in, in my message, Preserve for a Purpose, I, I share one point is this. I say, God causes you to walk through the darkness so that you can shed light upon other people's life. Whatever problem you go through today is to help somebody around the road, the challenges we have gone through. Today, if you are a cancer-stricken patient, and somebody come and tell you, brothers and brother, sister, I understand how you feel. Bullshit, you don't understand how the person feels. But if you are a cancer survivor, and you tell the, the person, I understand how you feel, the person will be comforted because... You have experienced the same problem the person has gone through. So some of your life testimony is not just for you to see the hand of God in your life, but for people down the road. That you can encourage somebody down the road and say, Brother, sister, I've gone through the same journey. I understand how you feel. Because I also was lost at one time, but I found God. You know, I found there was still hope, huh? You know, so it is important for you all to realize that not uh, doesn't mean when you are become a Christian, uh, you will have no problem. You will have problem. But one thing that God promises you is that I will never leave you uh, nor forsake you. To his disciples, Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you. So it is important for us to understand that as Christians, there will be challenges. If you know this, then you, you can brave the storm. It doesn't come uh, as a thing. It comes as, as a weapon to discourage you or to uh, disappoint you, but it is not meant to be that. It is meant to build you and bring you to another level. Once you become a Christian, you will have, never have any problem. Huh? And if you are having problem, then you are spiritually in deficiency. That means some people... I have this experience in my own life. When I was going through problems and challenges, there were some Christian brothers who would come and tell me, oh, you must have seen in your life. That's why you got so much problem. Job also experienced the same thing. The Bible tells that Job three friend came and told him, it's because of your sin. That's why you got so much problem. But I want to tell you, no, it, it is true that we need some time to soul search whether our uh, problems are caused by our own uh, our own uh, mistakes and so on but 
Many times it's also because God is bringing us to strengthen us. So you all realize that do, uh, do not get discouraged by what people talk about you and so on. Just uh, remember that God has a tall order. An important thing, again, like I say, God will never leave you nor forsake you. You are not spiritually down uh, because you are having problems. Otherwise, the 12 disciples of Jesus would have been a failure. 11 of them died a martyr for Jesus, crucified upside down and so on. But they went through challenges. You know, Paul, who uh, was the highest of all Pharisees, met Jesus on the road of Damascus. Thereafter, that, uh, he realized uh, uh, wherever he went, he preached, I'm the one that crucified Jesus. I'm the one, I'm the one that caused all these things. But he, eventually, he learned this. He says, no longer I that live, but Christ that live in me. The life I now live, I live for the Son of Man who saved me. He realized that it was a bigger uh, plan of God. He realized that at the end of the whole situation, he, he realized that God was working in him, bringing him to another level. You know? And uh, so it is important that he could finally declare, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? He could stand there and say, no, my life is sold to Jesus. Nothing is going to disappoint me. No problem. No, no words of any of the enemy is going to discourage me because I'm sold to Jesus. My life is given to Jesus. You know? uh, that's why Cory Tambun could say, I die a thousand deaths. Every day I die. I die for Jesus. You can only be a witness for God if you are rich and successful. And that's not true also. Okay? Uh, you can be a witness for God in wherever you are. You don't, you don't have to be rich. It's the prosperity teaching that say that you, you can be a, a testimony for God when you are rich. It's true. Uh, it is true that you can be a testimony for... But greater testimony is one that you are suffer in the fellowship of Him. Uh, you fellowship in the suffering of Christ. I'm convicted, I'm convinced that God is alive. You know? And you, you function with the, with the love for God that surpasses understanding because there's so many reasons the world will, will, will challenge you and say, see, you're a Christian, you're so poor. But you have the inner peace that is beyond human understanding because at the end of the day, you know, our greatest alignment in our life is when we, in our funeral service, uh, somebody will say, so and so made a difference in my life. Because all the riches you have, you cannot take along with you. You have to park it behind. Your children, your, your children, children will come and say, my father made a difference in my life. I want to be my, my father. I want to be like my mother. And that's the, the difference you leave behind. It's important that you understand this thing. You don't have to be rich to be successful. Many people want to wait until they get rich, then only they be, begin to serve God, uh, begin to give to, to God. The, otherwise, the lady with two copper mic would not have given any money yet. She said, wait until I got the money, because my money, two copper coin, won't make any difference. But it made a difference in the kingdom of God. Because it, she gave out of her heart. So it is important that God wants you all, because many of us will be challenged, wait until I do well, uh, uh, then only I give. Wait until I, I do well, only I go and serve. You know, I also, same thing, when I first uh, going through my challenges in my life, I say, I was approached to serve God, I say, uh, God, you help me, I serve you. Then I heard God say, you serve me, I help you. <laughs> you know, so we always tell that God, uh, if you bless me, uh, then I will, uh, I will serve you. You know how, how often the Bible tells us rejoice when a brother rejoice, mourn when a brother mourn. It is easy to mourn when a brother mourn. When somebody dies, you, you hug and cry with the person. Oh, that's easy. But to rejoice when another brother rejoices, very difficult. 
No, not true. If somebody is blessed with a new car or a new house, how many of you wake up and say, Lord, I'm so happy you blessed him. Most of you will wake up and say, Lord, why you forgot about me? <laughs> Correct? Because that's the condition of the heart. Huh? Our heart, that's why the Bible says, above all is deceitful. We are, we are not uh, sincere. So God has to work in our hearts and our mind. Uh, it begins by the little that we can give now, not when we give in the future. Uh, most time when we tell the Lord, you bless me and I will give it to you, I can tell you it never happened because you buy one house, you have two houses after that. Then you have the third house from one aircon, two aircon, three aircon, then you got no money to give some more. Uh, so it begins by the little you sow. It's not... I'm not asked by your pastor for fundraising, okay? I, I'm not invited to do fundraising for anything. But it begins by the little you have. Uh, you start giving by the little. You know, I, I used to tell my wife, I say, I don't give because I have a lot of money. I give because I know how it is like to have nothing. Do you understand? Some people who have nothing, they are so difficult out there. You know, they need your curry chicken. Huh? Uh, you just buy and give to your neighbor. Oh, there's no reason why they should give me a curry chicken, but they brought a curry chicken for me. And that's where the, the weakness becomes. That's the, where the testimony begins. You know, that's where the story begins. So it's important for you and I to understand this thing. It is not when you are rich that you can glorify God. It is where you are, you can glorify God. It's where this lady with two copper mic who walked and Jesus said it was thick. What she has done has done for a memorable thing for us, for us today to learn. We don't give because we have a lot of money. She didn't wait until she had a lot of money. She started giving because she had she, she addressed the condition of her heart. The condition was to give unto God. And number four, all your problems can be solved with the application of a right scripture. Most of us think that we, every of our problems can be answered by the right scripture. It is not true. There are some things even today I cannot understand. I, I don't have answers for everything. But in, in Hebrew chapter 10, it says that the just shall live by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. That means there will be situations that you can I cannot understand, you know, and then, but we will just have to learn to trust God, uh, because at the end of the day, when you, when you meet your Savior, you can ask Him all the questions you want to ask Him, but you will continue to serve and to be faithful before God, because it is not when you get all the answers, most of us ask, don't do anything until we get answers, but you will not be able to get all the answers, because God expects you to live uh, the judge shall live by faith. Sometimes as fathers, we don't give our children credit card because there's not the right age to give them the credit card. You know, we know it's not the right age. When the son says, why? My other friends got the latest handphone. You don't want to buy me the handphone. Huh? But you have a reason not to do it. Huh? Not because you cannot afford it, but sometimes it's not the right timing. Huh? There's a reason why you withhold because we are created in the image of God, that's the, various, that's the sum of the similarity in the character. We don't explain everything in our lives. Uh, Father God also don't explain everything. But He expects you to be obedient. Your children are expected to be obedient to you, even though you don't explain everything in your life. And so, I want to tell you that don't wait for answers before you continue to, to be fervent with your giving, with your fervor, with your devotion and spend time with God. You know, and uh, I, I want to uh, sh close with you, to share with you that in our life, just now I mentioned that the heart is deceitful. Many of time we give all, all of tangent many times. Uh, if we go back after today's service and recollect the moments that we, we have run off tangent in our life, there are many times Many times we wake up 5 o'clock in the morning when we had nothing and we were in desperate situation. We cry and knelt down, God, please, Lord, touch 
a little touch upon our life. After your problem is solved, you don't wake up five o'clock anymore. No? I'm wrong. So we need to go back to alignment before God and say, God, in every situation, I don't need a problem to look, come to look for you. I need to look and be grateful every day for what you have done in, my, in our lives. And so continue to stay steadfast before God and look to God and then help to get your bearing right before God in the ways you, you, you live for your life for God because some of us have already passed the three-quarter mark. Uh, we got only one quarter left uh, and we want to make our days count before God. And so it's important that we begin to uh, live our life in proper uh, in alignment and don't then get easily swayed off by situation. We can get easily distracted in many of the things when we don't stay focused. Shall we pray? Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for being merciful to us, Lord. Gracious, Lord. Now that we have heard from you, Lord, and I have been able to express from the experience I walk with you, Lord, to my brothers and sisters, I want to tell you that we are grateful for your mercy upon our life, Lord. We are grateful that you have uh, spared us, Lord. Have we account us for according to your righteousness, Lord, we would have been slain so many times, Lord. But you, in your mercy and your grace, Lord, chose to love us, Lord. Shower us with uh, mercy, Lord, and grace, Lord. So this morning, Lord, my brothers and sisters here, I ask, Lord, that you begin to release, Lord, bathe them with your love this morning, Lord, that they may experience the supernatural naturally, Lord. That you in their life, Lord, bring them all one level higher, Lord. That they will stand out for you, Lord, in whatever may. That they say, come what may, Lord, I will love you forever, Lord. Come what may, Lord, I will love you forever, Lord. So we commit everyone unto you in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a glad frame for a wonderful message. Uh, this is uh, Christmas month, month uh, Christmas, uh, uh, what they call uh, agape month. So we need to go out and, and share the good news. We need to go out and uh, do the extra miles for God. Amen. And don't look at the uh, uh, environment situation because uh, slices shall live by faith. Shall we arise and sing these songs? as we uh, respond to this altar call. Amen. The floor is uh, here is open. So anyone need any prayer, you can come forward. Otherwise, uh, join us in the Kwan Special Medical Center for our baptism service. There will be refreshment there. There won't be any refreshment here. So you can go there. We invite everyone to come. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's sing this song. As we sing this song, feel free to come for our, past, our uh, brother Wilson. You pray for us, you lay hand on us. Whatever you want God to uh, 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 speak to you, and you know, all sometimes you know, you need to come forward by faith. So God will speak to us in this Christmas month what we can do f for Him. Not until we are ready, not until we are rich, not until we are capable. But why you are uh, lacking, you do things for God. And that is what can move God's hand and God moves God's heart. Let's sing this song. Hallelujah. Let's declare the goodness of God in our life. Hallelujah. Jesus, beautiful Savior, God of the majesty, risen King. Lamb of God, holy and righteous, bless us, Redeemer, right for this time. All the heavens shout your prayer. Francis, do you free come forward? Don't wait, wait for the song to finish. All creation you need any prayer request, come forward. Our pastor, our leaders will pray for worship you. How wonderful! Yes, tell him. Declare. How beautiful! In the name of a very name, as shot high. How wonderful! She is a wonderful God. A beautiful God. Amen. Save. Name of a man. man. 
Christ declare how beautiful He's a beautiful God. He got to make everyone beautiful. Although we may not be beautiful now. Father, we pray for this Christmas month, month of love. That Lord, every one of us will share love. So that those who have no love, those who are marginalized, those who are poor can come to you and they shall, their lives shall be transformed, totally restored, totally blessed. Thank you, Father. Bless each one of us as we go out from here. Bless those okay, Patterson candidates who are going to be uh, commit themselves to you, Father. Hallelujah. And Lord, guide us, lead us, show us the way as we go to the world. And Lord, bring us back again next Sunday for the same time, same uh, venue. Hallelujah. We want to have another time with you again. In Jesus' name, God. God's people say, Amen. Amen. Have a blessed Sabbath. Amen. Those who need prayer, you still can get for our way. God bless you. See you uh, in, in one specialist if you are available. Amen. Hallelujah.